Hey, hi everyone, welcome back to video series on Windows Server 2016, Certificates in Windows Server 2016. The broad term for a certificate environment is known as Public Key Infrastructure, PKI. I call that out specifically because you will probably see PKI listed in documentation or requirements at some point. If you haven't already, your PKI is provided by servers in your network and configuring those servers to issue certificates for you is the purpose of this chapter. This serves which you determine to be your certificate servers are more technically known as a certification authority, CA servers. In order to keep you rolling with certificates in your network, here are the topics that we will cover in this chapter. Common certificate types, planning your PKI, creating a new certificate template, issuing your new certificates, creating an auto enrollment policy, obtaining a public authority SSL certificate, exporting and importing certificates, common certificate types. There are a number of different types of certificates that you may find yourself needing to publish. As you will see, Coming up shortly, when you need a certificate hat, that has a list of particular requirements, you can build that certificate template to whatever specifications you like. So in a sense, there aren't really certificate types at all, but just certificate templates that you scope to contain whatever pieces of information that are needed for that cert to do its job. While this holds true, technically, it is generally easier to segment certificates into some different groups, making them more distinguishable for the particular type of job that they are intended to perform. User certificates, as the name implies, a user certificate is one used for purposes um, that are specific to the username itself. One of the platforms that is driving more certificate adoption is the network authentication process. Companies who are looking into stronger authentication in their environments are often looking into certificates as part of that authentication process. Smart cards are one of the specific mechanisms that can be used for this purpose. Some sort of physical card can be plugged into a computer in order for the user to gain access to that computer. Smart cards can also be stored virtually within a special place on newer machines called the TPM. But that is a different discussion for a different time. The reason we mention smart cards here is that many times the core functionality of the smart card authentication is provided by a user certificate that has been stored on that smart card. Another authentication form that is becoming more popular is one-time passwords OTP. This requires the user to enter a randomly generated PIN number in addition to their regular login criteria. And in some cases, when the user enters their PIN, they are being issued a temporary user certificate to be used as part of the authentication chain. Yes, a third place that user certificates are commonly found <laughs> is when companies employ file encrypting technologies such as EFS, short for encryption file system. If this is something you have been thinking of looking into, it is important to know that you will also be um, using user certificates as part of this encryption process. Computer certificates, often referred to as computer certificates or machine certificates. These guys get issued to computers in order to assist with the intersection between the network and the computer account itself. Technologies like SCCM that interact with and manage the computer systems, regardless of what users are logged into those computers, make use of computer certificates. These kinds of certificates are also used for encryption process, processing between systems on the network. For example, if you were interested in using IPsec 
to encrypt communications between clients and a highly secure file server, issuing computer or machine certificates to the endpoints within this communication chain will be essential to making that work properly. I issue computer certificates as part of every project in my day job to be used by the computers as part of the authentication process for a remote access technology called direct access. There are many different reasons and technologies you may be interested in, which would require the issuance of certificates to the client workstations in your environment, SSL certificates. If you find yourself in the middle of the certificate boat where you haven't really managed a CA server, but you have at one point issued and installed some kind of certificate, then chances are that the certificate you did work with an SSL certificate, this is by far the most common type of certificate that is used in today's technology infrastructure and your company is more than likely using SSL certificates even if you are not aware of them and do not even have a single CA server running in your network. SSL certificates are most commonly used to secure website traffic anytime you visit a website and see H TTPS in the address bar. Your browser is using an SSL packet stream to send information back and forth between your computer and the web server that you are talking to. The web server has an SSL certificate on it and your browser has checked forward that certificate before allowing you onto the web page to make sure that the certificate is valid and really who it says it is. You see, if we did not use SSL certificates on websites, anyone could impersonate our site. Let's give a quick example. Say one of your users is at a coffee shop using their public Wi-Fi. An attacker has figured out a way to manipulate DNS on that Wi-Fi network. And so when your user tries to visit mail.com, so.com in order to access their Outlook web access. The attacker has hijacked that traffic and the user is now sitting on a website that looks like their company portal, but is actually a website hosted by the attacker himself. The user types in their username and password and bingo, the attacker now has the user's credentials and can use them to access your real network. What prevents this from happening every day in the real world? SSL certificates. When you force your externally facing websites like an email login page to be HTTPS sites, it requires the client browsers to check over the SSL certificate as was presented with the website. That SSL certificate contains information that only you as a company have, it cannot be impersonated. This way, when your user accesses your real login page, the browser checks out the SSL certificate, finds it to be correct and simply continues on its merry way. The user never knows that they are being protected except from a little lock symbol up near their browser's address bar. On the other hand, if their traffic is being intercepted and be direct and redirected to a fake website, the SSL certificate check will fail and the user will be stopped in their tracks, at least to read through a certificate warning before being able to proceed. At this point, the user should back off and realize that something is wrong and contact their IT staff to look into the issue. SSL certificates used by websites on the internet are almost always provided not by your own internal CA server, but by a public certification authority. You have probably heard of many of them, such as VeriSign, Entrust, DigiCert, GoDaddy, and so on. Companies generally purchase SSL certificates from these public authorities because those authorities are trusted. By default, on new computers, the users um, might purchase in the field 
new systems know by default how to interact with certificates issued from these authorities and you don't have to take any special actions to make your websites function on the internet. On the other hand, it is possible to issue SSL certificates from CA server that you may have running inside your network, but it requires a couple of things that make it difficult. First, if you want to issue your own SSL certificate to a public website, you need to externalize at least part of your internal PKI, known as the certif Certificate Revocation List, CRL, to the internet. Anytime you take a component that is internal to your network, and publicize it to the internet, you are introducing a security risk. And so unless you absolutely have to do this, do this, it is generally not recommended. The second reason it is difficult to utilize your own SSL certificates on public websites is that only your own computers will know how to trust this SSL certificate. So if a user brings their company laptop home and uses it to access their email login page, it'll probably work fine. But if a user tries to access the same email login from their home computer, that is not part of your domain or network. They would get a certificate warning message and have to take special steps in order to gain access to the website. What a pain for those users. These issues can be alleviated by purchasing an SSL certificate from one of those public search authorities. And so purchasing these kinds of certificates is by far the normal and recommended way to make use of SSL on your publicly facing websites. Websites that are completely inside the network are a different story since they are not facing the internet and their security footprint is incredibly smaller. You can cert you can certainly use your internal CA server to issue SSL certificates to your internal websites and do not have to incur the cost associated with purchasing certificates for all those websites. There are a few different tiers of SSL certificates that you can purchase from a public CA information for which is listed on the authority's own websites. Essentially, the idea is that the more you pay, the more secure your certificate is. These tiers are related to the way that the authority validates back against the certificate requester since that is really where the security comes into play with SSL certificates. The authority is guaranteeing that when you access the page secured by their certificate, the cert was issued to the real company who owns the web page. Other than the validation tier, which you get to choose from when purchasing a certificate, there is another option you have to decide on as well. And this one is much more important to the technical aspect of the way that certificates work. There are different, sorry, there are different naming conventions available to you when you purchase a certificate and there is no best answer for which one to choose. Every situation requiring a certificate will be unique and will have to be evaluated individually to decide which naming scheme works best for the situation at hand. Let's quickly discover three possibilities of an SSL naming convention, single name certificates. This is the cheapest and most common route to take when purchasing a certificate for an individual website. A single name certificate protects and contains information about one single DNS name. When you are setting up a new website at portal.com, contoso.com and you want this website to protect some traffic by using HTTPS, you would install an SSL certificate onto the website. When you issue the request to your certification authority for this new certificate, you would input the specific name of portal.contoso.com into the common name field um, of the request form. This single DNS 
name is the only name that can be protected and validated by this certificate. Subject name, subject alternative name certificates, subject alternative name SEN certificates generally cost a little bit a little bit more than a single name cert because they have more capabilities. When you request an SAN certificate, you have the option of defining multiple DNS names that the certificate can protect. Once issued, the SAN certificate will contain a primary DNS name, which is typically the main name of the website. And further inside the cert, um, properties you will find listed the additional DNS names that you specified during your request. This single certificate can be installed on a web server and used to validate traffic for any of the DNS names that are contained in the certificate. A use case example of an SAN certificate is when setting up a link server. Um, Link uses many different DNS names, but all the names are within the same DNS domain. This is an important note regarding SEN certificates. Your name, your names must be part of the same domain or subdomain. Here's an, here is an example list of the names we might include in an SEN certificate for the purpose of Link. Link lync.com, soto.com, the primary one. Link discover.com, soto.com, meet.com, toso.com, dialin.com, toso.com, admin.com, toso.com, wildcard certificates. Last but certainly not least is the wildcard certificate. This is the luxury model, the one that has the most capabilities, gives you the most flexibility and at the same time offers the easiest path to implementation on many servers. The name on a wildcard certificate begins with a star. The star means any, as in anything preceding the DNS domain name is covered by this certificate. If you own con Toso.com and plan to stand up many public DNS records that will follow to many different websites and web servers. You could purchase a single wildcard certificate with the star.contoso.com and it may cover all of your certificate needs. Typically, wildcards can be installed on as many web servers as you need with no limits on the amount of different DNS names that it can validate. I have run across an exception to this once when a particular customer's agreement with their certification authority specified that they had to report and pay for each instance of their wildcard certificate that was in use. So watch those agreements when you make them with your CA. Most of the time, a wildcard is meant to be a free for all within the company so that you can deploy as many sites and services across many servers and utilize your same certificate everywhere. The downside of a wildcard certificate is that it costs more, significantly more, but if you have large certificate needs or big plans for growth, it will make your certificate administration much easier, faster and cost effective in the long run. So I'm going to leave it here today for this video. If you like listening, please consider like sharing and subscribing. Thank you.